give us an idea of what it means to innovate in this space and like give us like a window into what the daily operation looks like. Sure, sure. Yeah, it, it doesn't sound very exciting off the top of your head. It's, it's warranty work. But when you think about the scale we're at and what we're trying to do for our customers, so today, if you think about kind of a traditional arrangement, you've got your OEM, you're buying maintenance from them, you call them up, tell them you've got a problem, they work with you to try to figure out what the problem is, try to figure out how to dispatch the right part, try to get somebody there at the same time. It's a probably an eight or 12 step process to try to figure out how to get somebody to your operation. So one of the innovative things we've done is we figured out how to monitor that equipment so it immediately reports the specific problem and the specific part that's needed to repair the problem. So instead of calling up on the phone and going back and forth and waiting on hold, we know what the problem is the minute it occurs and we dispatch somebody there. You don't even have to call or ask. Oh, so it's proactive. That's correct. For most CIOs, they build, the way I always explain to someone who's not familiar with the the major role, CTO, I always say, is often building outward-facing technology. CIO is often building inward-facing technology. It sounds like you would have to build quite a unique system to be able to oversee this much equipment. Talk about like the steps that you guys had to take in order to make this even feasible. Because when I think of the sheer number of hardware people possibly have on-prem in just one office building, and the sheer lack of knowledge, that's another thing, the lack of knowledge, because I think to my own office, so we at Mission have, of course, we work hybrid, we also have a HQ, but like when things go down, like the printer, the sound audio board, well, I mean, no one knows how to fix it. Like, like that's like, and I'm sure most of your clients are in that same boat. Give us an idea of what it took to, I guess, engineer a monitoring solution to oversee all this. Because if you're proactively dispatching people, that means you're really dialed into like the performance of these this equipment. Right, and if you think about it globally too, it's massive amounts of data streaming to us at all times. And, you know, some equipment is just plain noisy. It may have something going on, and it will it will spew out you know 200 alerts that you have to deal with and figure out they're not all you know. They're, they're all for the same problem. So we have technology in place that puts you know, a monitoring agent, not on every device, but just at one location that is polling across the devices in your organization. It's doing some filtering and basic data manipulation there so that the stream coming back to our central operations is minimized. Collects that from all over the globe, brings it all back to a central place where we have machine learning in place that's monitoring those devices and highlighting the, the alerts that are important to us and important to our customers so that we can work on them proactively. So I'm assuming this is something you had to custom build. I mean, I, I can't right. imagine there somebody is, built this for you. It's multiple components. So there is uh, you know, some commercial software in use, but also our own central park layer that is translating these alerts and getting them over to our field service operations. So I would say it's a combo. You know, Certainly, if you look at IoT and those sorts of things, we're, we're using some commercial off-the-shelf technology to, to achieve kind of that IoT data stream. I'm kind of just imagining the size, scope, and scale of what you're looking at. You know, give us an idea. What are some of like the biggest challenges you have in maintaining this system? Because off the top of my head, I feel like the amount of you mentioned up to 200 alerts for a single problem, like the ability to diagnose between signal and noise has to be very challenging. I don't want to speak for you. Give give us an idea. What's the biggest challenge to maintaining this system because I'm still fascinated by the fact that it leads to a proactive possibly service visit. Like that's that's pretty darn crazy. Like if you can catch that, you know what I mean? <laughs> the system itself works pretty well. It's designing for redundancy and scalability that has been the challenge for us. And so, you know, it takes a lot of, of monitoring capacity to, to manage all this. And we need to design it for failover for redundancy. Putting all that together and having it work in a cohesive fashion to make sure it's up all the time, because it has to be up all the time, right? You can't, you can't miss some alerts has been the biggest challenge across it because commercial software needs a little bit of an assist, I'll say, to you know, achieve that redundancy that we're looking for and to react properly and let us know if a component of the system goes down. And, you know, it's like any other piece of software. Things happen, network changes occur, you know, a customer goes offline. We detect all that and let them know. But it took a good bit of custom code and some significant architecture to put it all together. So, for example, we used Azure to, to put all this in the cloud because we felt like an on-prem environment for it was not going to scale as fast and be as reactive as we needed it to be should have should an incident occur someplace. I'm still thinking about the the implementation of such a such a size and scale operation. You mentioned earlier how 
machine learning or artificial intelligence has helped you help the company significantly identify, you know, actual problems versus just signals and beeps that, you know, don't don't actually amount to anything. Give us an idea of how that evolved, because this is something that is, you know, obviously AI and ML is it's improved so much in the last few years. Right. So I, I'm trying to figure out, like, how'd you do this before? Like, <laughs> this sounds this sounds crazy. Yeah, I wouldn't say we're using the latest and greatest, you know, like a TensorFlow or something like that to try to figure it out, but we've trained the system in our own knowledge, right, across all these pieces of equipment. We know certain pieces of equipment just generate certain types of alerts, and we know that they're repetitive. So our own knowledge, you know, kind of goes into these rules engines that say, hey, you know, if you see this again within five minutes, don't alert on that again. Just just tie it back to the original record. So there's a lot of that programming in place to recognize the variance across this wide breadth of equipment that we cover. IT Visionaries is powered by Salesforce Platform and Dreamforce. Did you know all the very best Dreamforce sessions are available for free on salesforce.com slash plus. We recommend watching Platform and MuleSoft Keynote to get the down low on doing more with less and increasing efficiencies with automation.